It's Custom with your daily Google News, and today I want to show you how to use combined segments inside of the Google Ads Audience Manager in order to get really strategic about who it is that you're targeting with your advertising. Um, quick note, I believe pretty strongly that this is going to be far more powerful for outbound marketing, meaning you know, you're building display campaigns or outbound video campaigns, um, you're going in and you're looking for folks and then you're pushing a message in front of them. Now, could this apply to your inbound marketing? Absolutely, but it's it's less likely that gets you know when somebody's when you're bidding on a search term that's already so intrinsically qualified to try to overlay an audience on top of it makes it so much more difficult to prove viability. And then with these combined audiences, these these audiences are going to get really ultra segmented, and so I think you're just going to target yourself right out of the ability to get in front of anybody. Um, so I think this is an outbound. Uh, 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 initiative strategy and the way to think about this is you know if you've exhausted your your inbound audience or you want to find a new um you know pocket of people let's call it you know like blue ocean you want to get in front of people that don't necessarily know they have this problem yet uh you want to build a new audience um you have a you have a product or service that doesn't really have an inbound marketing audience for it they don't know they need this that type of thing this is where these combined audiences i think are going to be um really powerful so in order to do this I'm in my little sandbox here. Go to Tools and Settings, Audience Manager, and then in Audience Manager, you're going to select Combined Segments. And when we're in our Combined Segments, click on this little plus bubble, and uh, we're going to create a new Combined Segment. Now, um, if you've ever run Facebook ads, this is going to be really familiar to you in terms of the way that we're going to build this. Um, but what's going to happen here is Google is going to give us the opportunity to start targeting people by um, who they are, demographically speaking, what they're interested in, which is called an affinity audience, what they're currently shopping for, which is an in-market audience, or some other granular details like how it is that they've interacted with our business in the past. So um, if I click on the segment here, Google gives me recent ideas, which are maybe the more popular ones. Um, but go ahead and click on Browse. And it is your job, if you're going to use this, to go learn the ins and outs of everything that you're allowed to segment by. Um, and I'm going to work from the bottom up because that's going to be an easier way to do this. Um, the custom segments in your data is self-explanatory. You already know how to work with this. So this would be th things like, you know, excluding people that have converted or including your remarketing list. Um, it's, it's how they've interacted with your business. In market, this, is, uh, this refers to people that are ready to buy. Um, meaning they're actually in the market for this thing. So, you know, if they're in market for apparel and accessories, I can actually hit this drop down and I can see what apparel and accessories they're in the market for. So here's somebody who wants to buy jewelry or watches. Um, and then we have watches specifically. Here's wedding and engagement rings. Let's just pause for just a moment. Oh my gosh. Google is letting us know, hey, this person is actively searching and in the market for an engagement ring. Uh, and if you're in the engagement ring business, that is absolutely freaking huge. Um, it's unbelievable data. So if you want to be responsible with the utilization of this tool, you have to know what you can target by. Realize that you can get really strategic. So using the engagement ring example here, I could go target people that are in market for engagement rings because guess what else they're probably in market for? right? Wedding venues, uh, honeymoon, so trips, um, probably a wedding dress. Like y y you have the ability to extrapolate from this one data point and start to identify like, well, if you're in the market for this and, and you can get really expansive. I, you know, we know, and I forget exactly what the data point is, but it's something like within six months of getting married, most people purchase a house or whatever. And, and don't quote me on that because that data point's wrong. But the, the idea behind it is, is correct from a strategic standpoint. If you know things like that, then you can, of course, go find the in-market segment for people that are ready to buy homes, but you can also build additional audiences based off of um, in-market interests and life events that intrinsically qualify them for whatever service it is that you're trying to sell them. So don't just think like, oh, well, I just you know, sell uh, whatever. Um, wedding venues, so I'm only going to go look at venues, and if nothing is ex available or accessible, then I'm done. Um, realize what some of these things mean to people. Um, trips by destination, you can see the different destinations available. So, you know, I mean, if you're a specific um, locale or uh, resort, I mean, gosh, what amazing, amazing information they have here. Hotels, they actually let you segment by hotel star rating, which incidentally, that's another really interesting thing too. People that are looking for a five-star hotel are generally affluent. So if you're somebody who's, you know, let's say you sell travel insurance, but you sell high-end travel insurance, bam, we know they're going to travel because they're looking for a hotel and we know that they're rich. <laughs> so uh, start to figure out what it is that these segments potentially mean for you. 
We have the in-market segment that I just mentioned. You also have, let me go back to in-market, life events. Um, and life events are really interesting too. So um, somebody who just created a business, that could be huge. Uh, college graduation, home renovation. Um, this is a really big one too, because if somebody's renovating a home, that could mean a lot of different things. Job change, marriage, um, and then within marriage, there's uh, you know getting married soon, recently married. You notice that Google is sticking to positive notes here. Um, new job, new pet, purchasing a home. This is absolutely huge. Um, so you've got your in-market and your life events. You also have their affinity. Now, affinity isn't quite as strong as in-market. In-market means I'm ready to buy now today. Not really, but I've been shopping for this and Google knows that I'm actually in the market. Affinity just means Google's like, hey, these people are interested in this category. So they might not be in the market today, but I know that generally speaking, this is sort of the stuff that they're interested in. Um, I don't want to diminish the value of the affinity audience, but remember that this their, their, their wallet isn't out. You just now kind of get to know who they are. So you can say like, oh, I'm going to go after my foodies because I happen to know that, you know, this, this um, whatever it is, coupon package box that I'm building is perfect for those folks or cooking enthusiasts. This would be great if you're like one of those, um, what are those, like the blue apron, um, you know, they're not in the market. That's okay. You, you, if they were, it would actually maybe put you at a disadvantage because you could take your cooking enthusiasts and say, hey, we've got this really awesome offer for you. Um, Foodies in general, I love that that's actually its own category. That's so funny. I didn't know that. Uh, so you have your affinity, which is kind of who they are. And then you have your detailed demographics. Parental status, marital status, education, home ownership, uh, employment. Um, this is important for you to know because the demographic data tends to be actually pretty good. And it used to be a little bit more robust. Google's narrowed down on this. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's say that we do, uh, we do baby proofing. We do really high-end baby proofing. Um, we've got a business that does baby proofing and it's, it's, ba it's effectively a home remodel in a lot of ways. You know, like we'll go in and we'll actually like, uh, you know, potentially move walls, but definitely like mount furniture, um, you know, change what's hanging, alter chandeliers, you know, doorknobs, knockers, whatever you can tell them a dad. Um, so we're going to go in and we're going to build our, um, audience segment for baby proofing. Cool. So now I want people who are interested in uh, home improvement. Um, now you wouldn't have to sell this to just people that are interested in home improvement, but I'm going to build a bottom of the funnel audience first and then travel my way up. So I'm selecting home improvement, which is in market and I'm selecting general contracting and remodeling services, which is also in market. Notice that this is an or, so I'm telling Google, they need to be interested in this or this. They don't have to be interested in both. So I just, you know, could have, you know, doubled the size of my audience really with every new or I add, be really careful with your ors, um, because it's. It's not as though you're further defining who this audience is. You're saying this person or that person, no big deal. However, we can narrow. So I'm going to go narrow my segment and give Google an and. I want somebody who is in the home improvement, you know, interested in home improvement. But from a demographic perspective, if I'm baby proofing, I want parents of children zero to one, one to three. And that four to five is right on the line. You know, are you baby proofing a house for a four to five year old? I don't know. I'm going to toss it in here. Really what a cool thing to do, by the way, would be to build separate audiences. So I'd have audience one, which would be these two segments and parents of infants. Audience two, parents of toddlers. Audience three, parents of preschoolers. And then I get to test those audiences against each other. So, and you can continue to narrow, by the way. So I could add another segment. Realize with every segment that you add, you're narrowing who you can get in front of. So you have to be really careful here. That's the strategy. Um, However, what I'm going to do with you is instead of adding, we're going to exclude. So let's go exclude uh, and bum, 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 bum. we're going to browse demographics, homeownership status, renters. I'm going to exclude renters and I'm excluding renters. Now, I mean, renters might be interested in baby proofing, but this is super high end stuff. And I want, you know, people that really want to invest in their house. So interested in home improvement, have kids, not renting and Bam, when I create this audience, I can now use this audience in my, you know, outbound display video campaigns. You can't use it in discovery. Um, but this is what allows me to go out and get in front of those people. And uh, I'd strongly recommend having really robust media that you're testing against when you're running these types of campaigns and also have a compelling call to action. This isn't a bottom of the funnel campaign, meaning you can't say sign up now, you know, schedule your consultation, pay me money. Instead, you should have like really good lead magnets, really good information, really good content. Give give, give, give them something, give them something of immense value, build a relationship with them, love on them. And then you're going to drop them in the funnel and sort of nurture them. So this is full funnel marketing. Y'all, if you're a spoiled Google advertiser like me, you're used to people just picking up the phone and paying you. 
It's not what this is. This is you know list building, awareness building, getting in front of folks, figuring out what your sales cycle's like. Um, but if if you don't have the audience or you're able to build a new audience, it's worth it. It's worth the time, the effort, the energy, the money, all those things. I hope this is helpful. Uh, shoot a video every day, so I hope I get to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know we actually know what we're doing. We shoot a video every single day. So if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any input, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We get very little human interaction. Thanks for supporting our channel, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.